You're listening to the BBM Global Network with 25 years in broadcast audio and video production. Our passionate team creates content and marketing for the world of Internet talk radio. If you've got a passion, come join us at BBMGlobalNetwork.com. The BBM Global Network. Your voice is now heard. Mind is a terrible thing to waste. Welcome to Interconnected with your host, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Psychiatrist Rainer Gilmore will explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit, and how they have an effect on each other within our internal and external worlds. So welcome the host of Interconnected, Dr. Rainer Gilmore. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. I welcome you to enter on this journey with me as I explore the interconnectivity of the mind, body, soul, and spirit. When you enter this space, you will be connected to a wealth of information. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866 866- Four five one one four five one. Again, it's eight six six four five one one four five one. For these, for any first time listeners, my name is Dr. Gilmore. I'm a board certified psychiatrist that specializes in child and adolescent psychiatry. I'm from the wonderful state of Florida, and I am currently practicing in Cincinnati, Ohio. Before I get started with the show, I'd like to wish my sister a very happy birthday. It was her birthday today, Rakesha Gilmore Bird, so happy birthday. I also want to give a congrats to Andrew Gillum, who won the uh, Democratic primary for governor in Florida, making him the first black person to do so. So go, Andrew. I'm going to be voting for you, so I wanted to give him his props. It's about time Florida did some right when it comes to politics. This evening, I have the pleasure of having a friend, someone that's like family, and we're going to talk about the criminal justice system and the mental, physical, emotional, spiritual effects one who has been incarcerated goes through. His name is Anthony Carter. I'm going to call him Tony. Is that cool, Tony? Can I call you Tony? That's fine. All right. I just want to make sure, you know, my mom will get me if I don't don't ask. So, Anthony Carter is 38 years old. He was born in Germany, raised in Tampa, Florida. Go Florida. He was raised by a military family. His father retired was a retired, excuse me, a retired 30-year decorated combat vet, and he later retired from uh, human resources uh, for 20 years. He was married for 43 years, and his mom was a mother, excuse me, his mother was a retired RN for 40 years. Well, so RN for 40 years, retired. Anthony graduated from Brandon High School in 1997, In 1996, at 16 years old, he was incarcerated for armed robbery and ended up doing about four years in prison in Tampa. Um, After that, he had several violations of probation from 2000 to 2005 and was incarcerated for about three years total. And he was also incarcerated in 2005 in Tallahassee for aggravated assault, possession of a firearm, and spent about another five years in prison. 
Despite all of that, he graduated from Tallahassee Community College in 2005 and got his AA with honors and also graduated from the University of Cincinnati in 2015 and got his Bachelor of Arts in Africana Studies. He also has state certifications in carpentry, electronics, and law clerk slash legal aid. And he's currently living in Cincinnati, Ohio. So welcome, Tony. Thank you for coming on the show tonight. Uh, thank you for having me, Dr. Gilmore. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. So first, you know, I wanted to just kind of dive in because I know there's a lot to talk about. You have a a great story. Um, I know that when people have gone into the criminal justice system or involved in the penal system, many people have the misconception like they like to lump them all into one category and feel like they all came from broken homes and rough you know upbringings and things like that so that's not your case you know so can you kind of talk about your upbringing and then what your motive and mindset was um at 16 when you were first arrested okay yeah well yeah, definitely. My my motives and so forth weren't the, I guess, what you would, what we what we would consider the traditional criminality type of thinking. Um, I came from a rather structured home, as you indicated earlier, being of the military background, and my parents were married, and we came from a about a low middle income family and um, neighborhood and so forth. So. The you know money and things like that weren't my main motive. What what was more going on with me is I also my 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 family is also a little older as as you as you might can add start adding up the years. You see they've been around for a while. So my uh, as I was saying my family, um, uh, I, I my my father was about forty years old when I was born. So. Let's just say, uh, let's put it this way. He was born in the 30s and my mother was born in the 40s. So they came from a different line. They came from before we had civil rights and so forth and so on. And so with that being said, a lot of that historical stuff that went on was always imparted on me as a youth. So when I was growing up, my, I was more along the lines of rebelling against society at large, how it has ostracized African Americans in general, not necessarily specifically, nothing specifically to my family, but more so as a whole, just how we've been treated over the years. And so at that time, I say, well, that's a way to get back. Okay. Okay. And I, and I, and I think that's very interesting because being that age, you know, that that's kind of like a mature set of thinking, you know, mindset. And that's because you had older parents. And I think other people who were either raised by grandparents or have older parents can probably relate to having that kind of mindset because you you hear, you heard firsthand, you know, stuff that we might have read about or people with younger uh, parents might have read about or or secondhand stories, you know, that our parents said about their parents. So um, it's definitely interesting. Um, exactly. And then what about the, the other? Mean, Go ahead. Were you I, didn't about to say to, something? Um, I didn't mean to add, but I, I meant to add because along, along with that is my parents were also from the Jim Crow South. My mo- my mother's from Alabama and my father was from North Carolina. So they were very, very used to dealing with direct racism growing up. Right. Right. Which makes a big difference. You know, I've been... Um, reading the book and I think we've talked about this the the new Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander it's very very well I've been listening to it um on Audible um it's very very great book that really talks about the kind of racial disparities uh when it comes to the criminal justice system and how it like how it goes through the progression of starting from slavery to present times how they uh, how the majority race has tried to keep us down and and make us feel inferior through different methods, regardless of what laws are made to try and prevent us, you know, prevent them from doing so. They keep finding other ways. So I think this, um, you know, having you on is a good indication of 
the new Jim Crow. And, and as you'll see, as we uh, go through the show, you'll see a lot of stuff that he, that uh, Tony had to go through that was unnecessary, you know? Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm very glad that he's being open enough to talk to us about that. Um, and so um, we're going to go ahead and take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeartRadio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about Tony's transformation um, being incarcerated. So stay tuned. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the real realization of your dreams by making them a reality. Based in Quebec, Canada, Joanne is also a space coach using social media and Skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world. Contact Joanne Charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca. 819-360-3266. Now is your time. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. Tonight, I have the pleasure of having special guest, Anthony Carter, who is going to talk to us about his experience being incarcerated and the criminal justice system. I want to make note that um, when we... When we're talking to Tony tonight, he's referring to his experience in the Florida criminal justice system. Um, I know he wanted to make sure that that was stated because it varies. The criminal justice system is different in different states. So um, he's going to be talking about his experience as it relates to Florida. Um, so, Tony, um, I did have a question from a listener for you to elaborate more on talking about how your upbringing um, and listening to your parents talk about kind of racism and how that related to your, um, you know, the criminal activity at such a young age. Can you kind of, um, you know, talk more about that? Like how it relates. Well, yeah, well, you know, <clears throat> I just, with so many stories of, oppression, unfairness, direct direct acts of violence against our people and so forth and so on. And then mm -hmm. moving forward, being at this time, which is we're talking in the early 80s, or, uh, yeah, yeah, it's in the 80s and the early 90s. And just it just seemed like although things were different, it was still a lot of the same stuff going on to my, from my perspective especially around me growing up. It's like my, my father would tell me of stories 
of how they were treated when he was young. And then we were seeing, or I was seeing similar things, not necessarily directly to me at that time, but similar things going on like that around in society. And with that being said, actually there were a lot of specific things that actually did happen to me in the school systems, a lot of, in the school system. I had several instances where it was pretty much just the whole racial thing. It was, it was the whole, everything that went on was specifically as, as a result of race. And so okay. with that being said, I, I had, I had this, this, this burning inside of me of, you know, of rage or whatever you would want to call it. And then along with that, you, you add that into being accessible or coming from a mil you know, as I say, as, as Randall said before, I grew up around a military background. So mm -hmm. I had, I had access to weapons and, and ways of attack of, you know, of things. And I, I, had, I was, I had access to things. And so when you add those together and then along with that, I was, I was, I was around people, I was around a group of guys and, you know, other individuals who had a uh, justification or rationalize it. Now they, now their motive, their motive was strictly for the money. So mm -hmm. and my motive was not for the money. So we actually kind of, work together we work well together because <laughs> we work well together as simple as that right and so i mean that's just kind of how it turned out okay and what about the uh the later uh crimes what was kind of your mindset and motive for those well late, later on in life it, it was it was totally different totally different later on in life i i can't even say that i I, I actually per perpetrated a crime as and under this. It was totally different. Um, so, well, the, the main one we talk about what happened in Tallahassee. Really, the only thing what happened in Tallahassee, I was charged with aggravated assault and in possession of a firearm. Where I was in a situation where um, my home was some somebody came in. It was, my home was burglarized. Somebody it was a home invasion, and my girlfriend at the time. She was a, a legal, uh, she had a concealed weapon and everything. She had a legal firearm carry. And so we had an intruder in the house, and I didn't want her to confront the intruder, so I confronted the intruder. And they said that that was against the law because I was a convicted felon, even though it was in my home. So that's why I went to prison. You were trying to protect your home, but because you had that convicted felon status, you were... Correct. Not allowed to do so, basically. Correct. Okay. And can you talk about the kind of the mental transformation that you went through um, while incarcerated? Um, I know specifically you've talked about, you know, the difference in being in the general population versus being in solitary and things like that. Can you kind of talk about that? Well, initially when I was incarcerated, um, I was what's considered a, a youthful offender. So what that is, is, is it's a, a young person in an adult prison. Um, technically it's, um, I believe it's under 24 years of age. And so that's, that's, that's what, that's what, that's where I was. It's not juvenile. It's where they send the juveniles who they are considered adults. And so that's where I was, and while and that was that was a rough time. And while I was there, that's when I w I was in solitary confinement for about a year or so. And um, that was <laughs> once again that was as a result of going against the system. This time, trying to go against the system through the grief through the grievance process, trying to go formally through the system and follow the correct procedures to you know, raise my gripes against what's going on, but I guess I chose a bad spot to want to do that, being inside the prison. And so I had to deal with all the reprisals that come from someone speaking out against the system from within the system. And so um, that was, that was I, I spent, like I said, I was in, I was in confinement for about, for about a year. That was, that was, that was bad. That was, I mean, I don't know how I made it through. <laughs> It was it was it was a rough it was a rough it was a rough place to be in, especially being that young, being mm -hmm. by myself. I lost my my grandmother, my grandfather, 
all while I was in confinement. I didn't even find out till months and months later. Wow. Wow. And yeah, because you know when I was yeah, in DC, you, you're not allowed to have anything. Right, and you were telling me like what what all did you have in, in the solitary? It was very minimal. Um. Yeah, you didn't have anything. You had um, a little flex pen, a couple pieces of paper sometimes, envelope, and a Bible, bar of soap. And that's it. Yeah, uh, that's it. Wow. And for a whole year having to do so that. I read the Bible a few that. times. I yeah. read the Bible a few yeah. times. I switched over, read the Quran a few times. So that was the only real reading literature you were allowed to have other than letters, but they were real funny on how they would allow you to get letters. So. Oh, wow. Okay. Well, it's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you are listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about life in prison. Stay tuned. Essential Nutrients, LLC, is the brainchild of entrepreneur Barbara Burns. Inspired by a desire to help others, Barbara worked with a team of scientists to develop unique nutritional liquid supplements with the goal to improve the quality of your life. Glucosamine, zinc, and calcium are essential to well-being, and this is the focus of Essential Nutrients, LLC. Whether you're a professional athlete, weekend warrior, student, business owner, or homemaker, Essential Nutrients offers products for everyone, including the family pet. And they're easy to take, no pills. Health requires commitment, exercise, a good diet, proper supplementation, and action. So take action today and get your supply of essential liquid nutrients by visiting www.essential-liquids.com. Don't put off your health any longer. Take essential products today and start to measure the difference. Unleash the obstacles that bind you with certified professional coach Joanne Charette, a master practitioner in energy leadership. Joanne can help you break through personal and professional barriers and guide you to a higher level of empowerment and fulfillment. Passionate and dedicated, Joanne engages with her clients on a mutual journey. Her dynamic energy will motivate you to move forward as you partner on a venture to greater results. Isn't it time to make a breakthrough and commit to live the life you deserve? Invest in yourself and let Joanne Charette be the catalyst to the realization of your dreams by making them a reality based in quebec canada joanne is also a space coach using social media and skype to work with anyone anywhere around the world contact joanne charette today at 819-360-3266 or email her at actionrealization at live.ca 819-360-3266 now is your time Hello, welcome everyone. I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you and this is Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that's 866-451-1451. This evening, we're talking about the criminal justice system and have special guests, Mr. Uh, Anthony Carter and Tony, for people who might have tuned in later, missed it. Can you just kind of go over like what charges you had going from when you were 16 until the last time you were incarcerated? Uh, uh, my first when I was when I was 16, the first thing I got in trouble for was I had a few uh, robbery with a firearms, false imprisonment, um, possession of a firearm. Yeah, that's it was it was a it was a few of them. That was the first time in when I was in um back in ninety six. And then um when I got out while I was on probation, I had several violations, mostly all pertaining to technical probation rules. I think I may have caught one or two new charges. I may have beat one or two new charges. 
I may still have a few convictions. I'm not even sure. I've been incarcerated a lot of times, actually. I was actually locked up maybe about nine or ten times between that mm. time. But um, And then in 2005, it was um, aggravated assault with a firearm, possession of a firearm, okay. and uh, maybe false imprisonment, maybe. I'm not even sure what all I got convicted of. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, and I have a, another question uh, from a listener um, who was asking about um, the in 2005 when you uh, with the home invasion, um, uh-huh. you you couldn't use the stand your ground like was stand your ground even a thing then or was that something that couldn't even be no. considered because of your, stand your ground. status? I got you. Mm-hmm. I got you. I got you. So first off, stand your ground was not in effect at the time when my stuff happened. First off, right. Second off, thought. stand your ground applies to public places, so that doesn't apply. We have okay. in Florida, you know, in your home, you have what's called a castle doctrine, which has always been in effect, and that applies to you in your home, you know, protecting your property and so forth and so on. The problem with all of that is being a felon. The only thing I can use, what I would have to use is what's called necessity. And the state argued that being that my girlfriend was not incapacitated, it was not a necessity for me to use a firearm. She could have confronted the intruder. Hmm. So the fact that you were trying to protect the home again was not even taken into consideration. Well... It was, but then once again, necessity. That's only out right. of necessity. And they said right. it wasn't a necessity that I had to protect my home because she was there. Okay. Gotcha. And kind of but going again, back to the was... Oh, go ahead. Oh no, I would just I would just say, you know, that's I guess that's the male bravo in me, whatever you want to call it, but I don't want to send my girlfriend to confront an intruder at 2 o'clock in the morning. I mean, right. <laughs> that just don't sound right. I mean, I don't care if she does have a concealed weapon permit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to say, hey, baby, go out there and see who that is breaking in the house. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> but right. anyway, that's, that's, that's the deal. Definitely. And you went through, uh, went to a lot of, you were talking about you went to a lot of different prisons, even in the first uh, time you were incarcerated. Um, can you talk a bit about like your experience uh, going to the different prisons and how that, you know, the adjustment to to the different prisons and the different things that you had to think about and look out for? Well, the first time I was incarcerated was definitely a lot more volatile, if you want to say from that perspective. I went to more prisons. It was a lot more going on. It was it was just a lot more everything as compared to the second time. So going going back on that, the first time, yeah, it, it was, first off, you have to understand a, a, another main thing about it is being a, a youthful offender as a, 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 as opposed to a a, a adult, a full, you know, adult prison, being in an adult prison. So even the the guards and so forth and so on, they treat you a certain type of way because at the end of the day, the majority of people here are kids. So they have a little extra. They just, they just, they just go through a whole little. It, it's supposed to be kind of modeled after a boot camp, and it, it doesn't really work like that. This is where you see a lot of the. A lot of the people getting hurt and so forth and so on, all of that in the in the Florida system was in the wild camps, and it, it's it's just a bad experience. And so that's as that's why I went through so many camps because, as I said early on, from day one, I, I start challenging the system, and once you start challenging the system, it's it's a it's a bad road from there on. And I I, I had to learn the hard way, I guess. Right, and and I know you. You mentioned too when you know when I was talking with you um, about how like some of the inmates uh, could have been serving life sentences and how um, they may have wanted to eventually go to uh, on death row because on death row you have um, kind of more amenities offered to you. 
um, it's kind of a better way of living, I guess, if you're going to be in prison for the rest of your life. And so, well, that's, they that's, would, go ahead. I was saying, yeah, that's that's like when you're in confinement. That's not the regular general population necessarily. That's that's from the confinement standpoint. You know, you know, you have was you have regular disciplinary confinement. Then they have closed management, and um, and death row inmates are a form of closed management type situation. But the way they handle D.C. regular D.C. confinement and just the way that this, the institutions work and so forth. You you will find a lot of the times where people will hurt other people just to get moved into a different situation, you know, and, as you indicated, like we were saying. Yeah. So I may have several life sentences or, or just a lot of time, period. And mm-hmm. for whatever reason, I, I want to go to another institution or another whatever, this and that, and, and then, then, then direct violence will definitely get that done. Wow. So, yeah, I'm sure that that really kind of messes with your psyche and kind of you kind of like, I guess, hyper vigilant and kind of watching your back all the time, which you don't know. Without a doubt, without a doubt, because as a, somebody could want to leave for whatever, you know, you you is you surrounded by thousands of people. Well, you're not really surrounded by it. I mean, in your in your, in your pods, you'd only be a few hundred in there, but you're still surrounded by hundreds of people with. You know, in my scenario, being that I had high custody because of the type of crimes I commit, you know, the types of crimes I was convicted of. So, you know, I'm, 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 in, I'm okay. I'm, I'm in there with, I'm in there with everybody. <laughs> right. Got you. Got you. Well, it's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. And when we come back, we are going to continue to talk about life in prison. Stay tuned. Are you stressed? Is your stress driving you crazy? Do you know there are many ways to relieve the stress? The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic does just that. Reduce your stress plus so much more. Established in 1997, the Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic offers an approach to wellness for those individuals who choose to either utilize appropriate complementary methods to enhance their current medical care or to those individuals who are on their personal journey toward improved health and wellness through the use of therapeutic bodywork, Reiki energy healing, or hypnosis. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic is owned by Dr. Judy Dean, a registered nurse and board-certified massage therapist and medical hypnotherapist in LaPorte, Indiana. Visit www.spiritwithinmassage-hypnosis.com to see all services offered by Dr. Judy. For a free personal consultation, please call Dr. Judy Dean at 219-326-1380. The Spirit Within Massage and Hypnosis Clinic, 219-326-1380. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore and you're listening to Interconnected. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio and iHeartRadio. If anybody has any questions, the phone number to call in is 866-451-1451. Again, that's 866-451-1451. This evening we're talking about the criminal justice system specifically um, in Florida, um, and I'm talking to uh, special guest Anthony Carter. And, Tony, um, I'm getting questions because I think this is a really important uh, topic uh, from listeners, for the listeners. Um, one question is, did you feel that the criminal justice system in Florida was uh, racist and unfair? Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Um, well, yeah, <laughs> I mean, it is, yes, absolutely. But with that being said, I can honestly say I fared f- far better than so, so many, just about 80 to 90% of my brothers and sisters. Cause there's a lot of sisters in the, in the system also who went through the system. Um, I definitely had a, I guess you would say a, a unique experience in that respect, but uh, yeah, without a doubt, without a doubt, it's unfair, it's biased, it's racist, it's it's all of that. Me specifically, I mean, several times I was 
I don't know, I, maybe I would consider it almost blackmail or strong arm into taking convictions as a result of being a felon. You know, for instance, it, I had one one time when I was my probation was violated. I, one of the times earlier when I talked, when I was referencing, sometimes I had new cases. I can't remember. There was so much going on. Well, one of those times specifically, they had conditions on my probation that they knew were wrong and they knew I shouldn't be under. And then I was out. I was out. I was out at a place, and 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 some stuff happened, and so they just arrested everybody. And so later on down the line, they come up and they say, well, we know you didn't have nothing to do with anything, but you violated these conditions of your, but, okay, they say, we know you didn't have anything to do with, you know, what what, what happened, but if you mm-hmm. challenge the, if you challenge that, if you challenge that case, we're going to, we're going to violate your probation on these conditions that, you, that we know you shouldn't be on, but we're still going to violate you on that. And send you back to prison unless you take these extra charges and then we'll just play like ain't nothing happened. So, so, okay. you know, it's, it's instances like that where, you know, it's, it's almost like you're strong armed into taking convictions where, you, you know, and then, and then, and then later on, come to, later on, about two years later, they come back by the way and say, Oh, we should have never had you on those conditions in the first place. You see? And then it's just like, it's, you know, it's like they just strong arm you in, in into into taking convictions because you know here you are, you're incarcerated, you want to be out, you losing your job, you're away from your family. It's all these type of collateral things that are happening. Mm-hmm. And, and, and it's kind of it's kind of it, you know it, it doesn't really give you the ability to mount a true defense, especially if you don't just have you know fifty, sixty, seventy thousand, a hundred thousand dollars saved up, which most people don't, or else they wouldn't even right. be dealing with these type of things. Right. Right. Can you talk a bit about um, kind of how medical care is in the prison and like the physical toll that the body goes through, um, you know, while incarcerated for you, your uh, personal experience? The medical is 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 horrible. It's horrible. It's horrible. I mean, it's, 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 as far as the medical the medical care they give you, especially on the prison side. Now, on the the county jail side, maybe a little bit different, but on the prison side, they they don't provide any real service other than basic keeping you alive, and they only do that to a certain extent. I mean, the most of the institutions I was at, I was at. When people will go to medical for for whatever they will go to medical for, the 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 the, the medical aid, the nurses and everybody, they would just be they would because they were just like, well, whatever your problem is, they would they would tell you to stop smoking cigarettes. A lot of people didn't even smoke cigarettes. And like, wait, 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 you just gonna give me some Tylenol and say stop smoking cigarettes, and that's the cure for whatever my ailment is. And and you can't. That's not a legitimate way to treat people. And you know. And so I've seen a lot of people die from lack of treatment, misdiagnosis, just not that. It's you know. Don't people in Florida once you're convicted of a of, of, of a felony and in prison and stuff, you know, you lose your civil rights and so forth. So people don't really care about you like that in the Florida because you once you once you're released. I mean, now they just recently have started restoring the rights for some people, but at this time they and it's, that's still a small number but at this time they weren't doing that at all and so you know nobody if if you can't vote for any politicians and this and that and and like i said your family just doesn't have a lot of money or isn't tied in politically or something the the system doesn't care about you and the people around don't care about you and that's just pretty much how it goes and what about mental health care in the in the prison system is how is that well me personally, I never really dealt directly with the mental health people. You know, I didn't have any mental health issues to deal with them. But just from being around a lot of people who have mental health issues, it, I would say it would be it's about the same, if not worse, than the way they treat uh, on, on on medical issues. Wow. And that probably takes a, a toll on you just, I mean, that can affect you even if it didn't happen to you personally, you know, it still can affect you and, and be somewhat traumatic. You know, I know it 
as, as a psychiatrist, I talk about that a lot, how the trauma doesn't have to happen directly, specifically to you for you to be affected. Without a doubt, especially in the, in the prison situ, you know, environment where regardless Oh, you, you're trapped in this. You're trapped in this closed quarter environment with all the, you know, with all these different personalities and all these different disorders or whatever, whatever. And and you have to deal with them. There's nobody to. There's no place to go. There's nobody to call. You have to deal with it. So yeah, it, it can be very traumatizing. Definitely. It's time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. And when we come back, we are going to talk about how Tony's life has been affected since coming out of prison. Stay tuned. For over 50 years, Evelyn Stapula has been a loving advocate for people with disabilities throughout the state of Pennsylvania. President and founder of Big Heart Bridges, her organization actively campaigns for legislation and support of civil liberties that meet the needs of disabled individuals with housing, transportation, and employment. Ms. Stapula has joined forces with a variety of esteemed organizations that advocate for the disabled. She serves on the board of the United Cerebral Palsy of Pittsburgh and the Governor's Cabinet and Advisory Committee for People with disabilities, and she is a consultant for the Pennsylvania Governor's Conference for Women. Her many efforts have led to the implementation of a transportation program for the disabled with the Access Paratransit System of Allegheny County. Evelyn Stapula strives daily to serve the interests of the disabled, to protect their freedoms, and enable them to live normal public lifestyles. To learn more, please call 412-491-2605 or email Evelyn at ers92645 at verizon.net. Renaissance woman, trailblazer, maverick. Those are just some of the words to describe Tashandra Poulard, owner and CEO of House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC, a woman minority veteran owned entertainment company based in Washington, D.C. Ms. Poulard served 10 years honorably in the United States Navy and departed from active duty to pursue her dreams of becoming an entertainment mogul. House of Virgo Entertainment offers script writing, producing, directing, DJ services, editing, and more. They cater to businesses, corporations, college students, working professionals, aspiring artists and nonprofit organizations, and employ veterans of the armed forces. Tashandra Poulard is pioneering the way we view media and taking her brand global. Visit her at www.houseofvirgoentertainment.com or call 281-515-3740 and like her on Facebook at House of Virgo Entertainment, LLC. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. This evening, we're talking about the criminal justice system, and I have special guest, Anthony Carter, who has had experience of being incarcerated. So in this segment, I want to focus on kind of life trying to re-enter into society. So, uh, you know, after being incarcerated, um, I would like to first kind of talk about what spirituality means to you and like how, how your faith was affected throughout this whole process. Well, to me, spirituality is your connection with a higher power, whatever you so call it, name it, however you identify it, whatever. But it's just that connection with that higher power and something that you can believe in and and so forth in in that realm. And as far as how it affected me specifically during all of the incarceration and so forth and so on, I would say it, it brought me closer or more in tune with my spirituality to a certain extent, I guess, being that I had lots of time to just sit down and meditate and just really think about myself and my positioning and, you know, others around me and so forth and so on. It kind of brought me actually to a sense of, uh, actually to a sense of at ease with everything in that, in that respect, as far as, because uh, let me, let me back up another thing. Being in the prison system, you got to understand also that 
there are many, many different religions and just forms of all types of stuff mm-hmm. running around, always coming at you. And every, you know, a lot of people is trying this and trying that and so forth and so on. So to stay resound in, in, in what you believe in and so forth and so on throughout the, you know, throughout that whole, you know, the whole, um, endurement or whatever, it's, it's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot. I mean, I, I see it affect a lot of other people a lot mm-hmm. more than I would say maybe it affected me. I think the time in confinement and just, I went, when I went in, I went in, I came, cause I come from, I came from a church family. So I, okay. I was kind of grounded in my beliefs before I came to prison. So it, it, it kind of just reaffirmed the things that I believe in and the things that I knew to be true. Okay. And, and speaking of family, can you talk some about how your family was, you know, the transformation your family went through, um, as you were going through, you know, your incarceration? Well, first off, let me say my family was instrumental throughout the whole process. If it wasn't for my family and friends, I, I, without a doubt, would not have made it. Or I, I wouldn't be here having this conversation, let's put it that way. But, uh, yeah, my, my family my family went through a major transformation also because, um, Going back to the to to the um, as I was you know to my my people in the age and the way they were and so forth, they were also they weren't familiar with the criminal justice system. So their perspectives and their understanding of it came from you know just society's understanding in general, from TV, from you know kind of what I heard or what I think from friends, kind of maybe type situation. They they did not really have any direct dealings with it and understand how, as we were saying earlier, how biased and how racist and so forth and so on it could be. Although they did know, they, 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 they knew and they understood that to a certain extent. They just didn't, they just hadn't really been confronted with it to address it from within the family directly. So, so initially it was Tony, you, you wrong, you this, da, 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 you know, just everything is, Everything you're doing is you bad, you wrong, and so forth and so on. Now, with that being said, I definitely was doing some wrong stuff. Now, at the same time, they also saw what the things that I was dealing with and the things I was complaining about later on, whereas the obstacles that were placed in front of me, and it's just like, okay, well, now, all right, you say let's put all that behind me and try to move forward, and yet here it is, you steady hitting me with all these curveballs, and I can't even get a break. I can't get a chance to even a level playing field to even try to accomplish what it is that quote unquote society wants me to accomplish as in being a good citizen or, you know, a good productive member of society when you really won't even let me back in the society. And so these are the things I'm complaining about. And so now from, you know, coming back from when I was young, they're starting to see this process also and starting to say, wait a minute, maybe it's not just him. Maybe the system is kind of jacked up in some of these certain ways because some of this stuff he shouldn't even been in trouble for. And there we go. Right, right. And like, so, and after, you know, coming uh, out of prison, like what were some challenges that you faced, like getting back into higher education institutions and, and I guess trying to reintegrate into society? Well... Yeah, that, that box, <laughs> that, that felony conviction. So mm-hmm. specifically, the well, that's one of the reasons I'm in Florida. I mean, excuse me, that that's the reason I'm in Ohio now is because, um, well, this was afterwards. After I got my associates, I was going to, I was going to, supposed to go to Florida State, but Florida State wouldn't allow me in because of my felony convictions. And so then I went through a few other schools and, once a, well, then I was incarcerated. And then after I got out, um, and this is in uh, 2010. Now I'm trying to do to get back on my education, and I, I, the Florida schools they they won't they they won't they they're not allowing convicted felons. This is they they won't allow me to go to school. Simple as that. So that's why I come to Ohio because Ohio allowed me to come to school and further my education. 
And um, but another thing though is employment. Now I will say, I I, I I've always had skills and have been employable, so I was I was always able to obtain jobs. The job obtaining job wasn't my problem. The main problem is with the skills and stuff I have. I'm always underemployed. Gotcha. Okay. Well, it's a good time for us to take a break. I'm Dr. Raina Gilmore, and you're listening to Interconnected. We're coming to you live from the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio. And when we come back, we are going to wrap up and see what Tony is doing now. Stay tuned. Certified professional coach Pamela Reeves can help you with your relationships. Motivational and image coaching are just some of the ways she can help you enhance all aspects of your life. Her book, Is It Love or Merely a Sick Attachment?, helps readers clearly distinguish healthy, loving relationships from toxic ones. Ms. Reeves has put her words into action through Ray of Hope Kenya, an international initiative that provides outreach to victims of abusive relationships there with the goal of helping them rebuild their lives and the tools to avoid abuse. Ms. Reeves operates various businesses interest through her umbrella network, Nella LLC, and credits her success to her diverse work experience. Whatever your goals, whether striking a balance, reinventing your image, or simply lifting your lifestyle, Pamela Reeves will help you achieve them. Your life, your call. Dial 410-902-5715 or email Pamela at pamreg01 at verizon.net. She's also on the web at pamreeves.com and on Twitter at Pamela underscore Reeves. Do you battle with weight loss? There is a solution. Founder of Weight No More Consulting, Deborah Simons, can help you lose weight safely and effectively through weight loss surgery. I know. I had the surgery two years ago, and I am 135 pounds lighter and medication-free. This full-service weight loss center caters to your every need as you navigate to a healthy weight following surgery. Servicing all of Canada, Weight No More Consulting takes pride in its compassionate care and guides you through each step before and after surgery. Starting with informational meetings, Weight No More Consulting educates each potential client before they decide to have surgery on the health risks of obesity and the various weight loss surgeries available. After surgery, Weight No More Consulting provides a solid support system with ongoing meetings to ensure continued success. Deborah Simons and Weight No More Consulting are committed to promoting your health and wellness through maintaining a healthy weight for life. You are listening to Interconnected, and I'm your host, Dr. Raina Gilmore. We're on the BBM Global Network, TuneIn Radio, and iHeart Radio this evening. I've had the pleasure of having special guest Anthony Carter. We've been talking about the criminal justice system. And I first just want to thank him for coming on to the show. I mean, he was very open and very honest, and this is not, you know, easy to talk about. So I, I really appreciate your, your honesty, your integrity um, in doing so and coming on the show. Um, I also would like to read a meditation uh, for the de- for the evening, and the meditation is, I am not fully healed. I am not fully wise. I am still on my way. What matters is that I am moving forward. And that's by Young Pueblo. So, Tony, can you kind of uh, kind of briefly talk about, like, you know, what skills you have, what skills you've learned, and what you're doing nowadays? Yeah. Well, um... As, uh, um, right now, well, let me go back to what some of the skills I have had. So as, as, as we said earlier, you know, I have my bachelor's in, in sociology, well, specifically Africana studies. And um, I've also been trained in carpentry and electronics. And I, I have a, a legal aid certificate I, that I received while I was incarcerated. I was a law clerk for the, the majority of time while I was incarcerated. But um, currently, as of right now, I, I, I mean, I have I'm, I'm working with a friend of the family. We have a, um, he has a general general construction business. We've been doing that, and I also <clears throat> I also have um, back in Florida. We have a me a, a friend, another friend of the family has a business. We uh, customize cars. 
So I've been back and forth between those two places of employment for right now because I also was dealing with a medical issue with my family. So I was traveling back and forth, and it was hard for me just to stay in one spot for a long for one uh, for a long set of time. So all of that's kind of much kind of evened out now and leveled out. So right now, what I'm 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 still doing I'm still doing the construction and and, and working at, uh, at the shop down in Tallahassee. But um, really what I'm looking for now is looking towards getting my, getting back in school to get my master's and keep going and try to see where I can go with it. And can you, can you uh, briefly talk about something that you've learned from your experience, um, you know, and maybe like a key point that you want the listeners to know about I'm definitely feel like we're going to have to have another show, but there's so much more to your story, but we just don't have the time. But if there's something like brief that you wanted to put out there. Just support. Just, I mean, that's, that's the biggest thing right now for me is just, just support for friends and family, loved ones. It's just, just the support throughout it all. Okay. And yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I'm you know, really mental, inspired. Physical, by you. financial, emotional. I mean, any way you can, mm-hmm. because it's it's a lot that goes on behind them walls that people don't really understand. Not just directly, right. but indirectly through and through the system, as we you know, just the way the system is derived. Like we were saying before that mm-hmm. you, you really don't understand until you really, really been inside. Right. And hopefully, you know, I can bring you back on and you can talk about, you know, more specifics about what it was like being inside. We just didn't really have the time tonight to really delve into that um, because there's, you know, more and more questions. But I'm definitely inspired by you and your story and the fact that you you have persevered and, you know, are moving forward. So I thank you so much for, again, being so vulnerable, being so open, being so honest and for being you. So know that 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 means a whole lot definitely and hey, thank, thank you for having me dr gilmore no problem i'm gonna have you again please believe thank you for entering this journey of the mind body and spirit with me have a great week and please stay connected take care you've been listening to interconnected with dr Raina gilmore Join the conversation each week as Dr. Raina explores the mind, body, soul, and spirit connection. Take a journey that will lead you to a path of healing, learning, and how to cultivate and manage your life. Here on Dr. Raina's Interconnected. You've been listening to the BBM Global Network. The ideas, views, and opinions of this broadcast are those of the participants of the program and are not necessarily the ideas, views, and opinions of the BBM Global Network Company.